While the dinosaurs ruled on land for most of the Mesozoic era, the seas were the domain of different groups of reptiles. Most people are at least somewhat familiar with the fish-like ichthyosaurs, the long-necked plesiosaurs, and their big-headed pliosaur relatives such as Leopleurodon. The Mosasaurs, which only lived during the late Cretaceous, have also recently seen a major boost in fame due to their appearance in Jurassic World. What is less well known is that the Jurassic and early Cretaceous oceans were also inhabited by marine relatives of crocodilians, called Thalatosuchians. Many of them had abandoned land entirely. The largest of these sea crocs was Plesiosuchus mancellii. Plesiosuchus was about 7 meters long, making it bigger than any modern crocodilian. None of the other fully marine sea crocs could rival it, but a few semi-aquatic Thalatosuchians, most notably Macamosaurus, were able to match or exceed its size. The only larger carnivores in Plesiosuchus in its native waters were pliosaurs. Fully adapted for life in the seas, Plesiosuchus' body was streamlined to ease its movement through the water. It had flippers instead of feet, and its tail had a fluke. Much like crocodilians, it was the tail, not its limbs, that were Plesiosuchus' primary source of propulsion. Its skull was deep, and its teeth robust, making it well-suited to take on other large, marine reptiles. Although the relevant regions are not well-preserved in any Plesiosuchus specimens, the orbits and presumably eyes of its close relatives were much larger than those of crocodilians. They were emphasized by overhanging prefrontal and squamosal bones above and behind them. Although not reflected in many reconstructions, Plesiosuchus' body lacked scales entirely. Most Plesiosuchus fossils originate from the English Kimmeridge clay, with a few coming from Spain and Slovakia. As the site's name implies, it was formed during the Kimmeridgean era of the late Jurassic, between 155 to 149 million years ago. Although the fossils of a few dinosaurs, such as Torvosaurus, have also been found there, the Kimmeridge clay primarily contains marine fauna. During the Jurassic period, most of Europe was covered by the shallow Tethy Sea, which appears to have been jointly terrorized by Pliosaurs and Plesiosuchus. Despite its obscurity, the first Plesiosuchus fossils were found during the 1860s, just two decades after Dinosauria was named. Plesiosuchus' name means near crocodile, but as time has gone on, its name has become more and more ironic. When they were first found, Thalatosuchians were thought to be an extinct branch of actual crocodilians. Crocodilia was later redefined to only include living crocodilians and the descendants of their last common ancestor. The former crocodilians excluded from this more restrictive definition were retained within the larger and more inclusive clade Crocodilomorpha. Thalatosuchians and other crocodilomorphs whose last common ancestor with crocodilians was already semi-aquatic, as opposed to the early diverging terrestrial species, were included with crocodilians in the clade Neosuchia, whose members are broadly what people think of when they hear crocodilian. However, further research has found that the Thalatosuchians may not be Neosuchians either, as they appear to be descended from terrestrial crocodilomorphs who took to the water independently, and many of their similarities with Neosuchians would thus be the result of convergent evolution. However, at a minimum, crocodilians are still the closest living relatives of Plesiosuchus. For all the uncertainty surrounding Thalatosuchia, the relationships of many other marine reptiles, including plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, are actually even more controversial. This is not the only factor that, in hindsight, makes the name Plesiosuchus ill-chosen. Its fossils were originally mistaken for those of a pliosaur, and then the fellow Thalatosuchian Stenosaurus. Differences between it and Stenosaurus were noticed by paleontologist Sir Richard Owen, the very man who named Dinosauria. He chose the name Plesiosuchus because he thought it had more in common with modern crocodilians than Stenosaurus did. However, Stenosaurus was a member of Teleosauroidea, the branch of Thalatosuchia that retained an at least superficially crocodile-like appearance and semi-aquatic lifestyle. This is also the branch that the larger Machimosaurus belongs to. Plesiosuchus was instead a Metriorhynchid. Metriorhynchids were completely aquatic 
to the extent that they are thought to have given birth to live young, rather than coming on shore to lay eggs. Additionally, teleosauroids like Stenosaurus had cold-blooded, or more properly, ectothermic metabolisms, much like crocodilians and most other reptiles. In contrast, Plesiosuchus and the other Metriorhynchids had metabolisms intermediate between those of crocodilians and the endothermic, or warm-blooded, metabolisms exhibited by mammals, dinosaurs, and the other large, marine reptiles Plesiosuchus preyed upon. This allowed it to actively pursue its prey, whereas teleosauroids were reliant on ambush tactics similar to those of crocodilians. As a side note, Pseudosuchians, the branch of reptiles that includes the crocodilomorphs, originally had high metabolisms that were later reduced in the lineage that led to crocodilians. Given that the Metriorhynchids seemingly underwent a second evolutionary reversal, some terrestrial Neosuchians, such as the Australian Quincana, may have redeveloped high metabolisms as well. Plesiosuchus's species name, Mansili, has aged better than its genus name, as it was named in honor of John Cavill Mansell Plydell, the man who discovered the Plesiosuchus holotype. In an interesting twist, the year after Sir Richard Owen named Plesiosuchus, it was reassigned to the genus Dacosaurus, which was later given the nickname Godzilla Croc on account of its short snout. Some scientists instead thought the Plesiosuchus fossils belonged to Macomosaurus or Metriorhynchus, but the assignment to Dacosaurus stuck until the early 2000s. Although now recognized as different genera, both Plesiosuchus and Dacosaurus belonged to the Metriorhynchid subclade Geosaurinae. Geosaurans had robust skulls suited for hunting large prey, as opposed to the members of their sister clade Metriorhynchinae, whose members had long, thin snouts better suited for catching fish and squid. Plesiosuchus is the namesake of a tiny branch of Geosaurinae are called Plesiosuchina. The only other named Plesiosuchian is Sucodus, who is found in England and France. It was smaller than Plesiosuchus, with the largest specimen a little less than 5 meters long. Its fossils are also a few million years older than Plesiosuchus, dating to the end of the Middle Jurassic and the start of the Late Jurassic, so it may be the direct ancestor of Plesiosuchus. Plesiosuchian fossils dating to the early Cretaceous have also been found in the Shesic Republic, Sicily, and France, and these may be descendants of Plesiosuchus. Although the first Metriorhynchids had long, thin jaws, over the course of their evolution, the skulls of geosaurines such as Plesiosuchus progressively became deeper and their snouts shorter. They were still compressed on the sides, but they were wider than before, and thus sturdier than the snouts of their more delicate ancestors. This shape was best suited for delivering powerful bites, and withstanding the strain created when holding onto large, struggling prey, with Plesiosuchus's jaws being perhaps the strongest of all. Its teeth were large, recurved, and compressed, a shape that has evolved many times among large, carnivorous reptiles. As in most other geosaurine metriorhynchids, they had microscopic serrations for cutting through flesh. Within Metriorhynchidae, Plesiosuchus has the largest optimum gape, the gape at which multiple teeth come into contact with potential victims. Higher optimum gapes are associated with a preference for larger prey. The optimum gape of the early Cretaceous Dacosaurus and Anensis is just below that of Plesiosuchus, while that of the contemporary Dacosaurus maximus was notably smaller. In many ways, the skulls of both species of Dacosaurus look more fearsome than those of Plesiosuchus, with a deeper shape and proportionally larger teeth. However, Plesiosuchus's jaws were more powerful as a consequence of its greater absolute size. The ecology of these two sea croc genera is thought to have closely mirrored that of modern North Atlantic killer whales, which are divided into two different types. Type 1 killer whales hunt some large animals, but primarily subsist upon fish, which they capture through suction feeding, something the short, blunt snout of Dacosaurus appears to have been well suited for. Suction feeding produces extensive wear on killer whale teeth, which has been observed in Dacosaurus's dentition, but is absent in that of Plesiosuchus. 
Type 2 killer whales are instead a large prey specialist, and are 2 meters longer than the smaller type, the same size difference as between Plesiosuchus and Dacosaurus maximus. For all its power, Plesiosuchus' jaws were ill-suited for ripping carcasses apart into smaller pieces, so the maximum size of its prey was more or less limited by the size of his own head. Thalatosuchian skulls were proportionately larger than those of crocodilians, but the bodies of many of the local marine reptiles were larger still. This shortcoming was not shared by the smaller, short-snouted Dacosaurus. Plesiosuchus also lived alongside two species of the less specialized Geosaurin genus Torvo nuestes. Some species of Torvo nuestes grew 6 meters long, not much smaller than Plesiosuchus itself, but the size of those from the Kimmeridge clay was more modest. Other contemporary predators include the relatively broad-jawed ichthyosaur Brachyterygis, but as mentioned earlier, the largest macro predators were the pliosaurs. The size of the most common local pliosaur, Pliosaurus itself, was at most only slightly larger than that of Plesiosuchus. However, fragmentary fossils suggest the presence of a much larger species in the late Jurassic seas, one which came close to the size of the otherwise highly exaggerated depiction of Leopleurodon in Walking with Dinosaurs. Even by the most conservative estimates, this would have been the top predator of Plesiosuchus' time, and perhaps the only creature it had no chance of overcoming. Other, more traditionally long-necked plesiosaurs, such as Columbosaurus and Chimerosaurus, were easy prey for the sea croc. When confronted by it, their best hope would have been to flee, particularly since they had higher, more active metabolisms than the Metriorhynchids did. Another notable prey item was the small, agile ichthyosaur Nanoterygis, which was adapted for quick bursts of speed, both to catch fish and to avoid the jaws of predators like Plesiosuchus. Other Thalatosuchians were also on the menu, including the semi-aquatic teleosaurid Bathysuchus, as well as the Metriorhynchines Crocosaurus and Metriorhynchus itself. Plesiosuchus is an example of how much more diverse the ancient world was than portrayed in media. While most people are only familiar with the same handful of marine reptiles shown again and again, one of the top predators in the late Jurassic Tethy Sea belonged to a group of fully marine crocodilomorphs few people have ever heard of. Besides being one of the deadliest predators of its time, the ecology of Plesiosuchus and its smaller cousin Dacosaurus closely mirrored that of two populations of killer whales alive nearly 150 million years later. In spite of their current obscurity, Plesiosuchus and the other sea crocs were important and awe-inspiring components of the prehistoric seas. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to my supporters on Patreon, who chose the subject of this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to support this channel more directly, you can join my Patreon, where you'll have access to polls to select the topics of future videos. Finally, be sure to have a great day.